So today I am joined by Alice Goring, who you may know better as Teddy the Shetland's minder, slave, PA, all of the above, but she's also a very a successful eventer in her own right. So today we're going to chat to Alice about Teddy, of course, but also about her own eventing and everything else and Teddy's incredible rise to fame and having a, a place in most people's hearts. So Alice, tell us all about you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, yeah, so I actually started off as an eventer, um, a sort of amateur eventer. I have a little horse who I event at advanced level British eventing. And um, we were looking for a companion for him. Well, he didn't really need a companion, but I just saw Teddy's advert. He looked absolutely adorable. So I couldn't resist him because my job meant that I couldn't get a dog. So I just thought, why don't I get a pony dog? So yeah, Teddy came along and he was um, so small, you could actually pick him up. Um, so that was really sweet. He was only five months old. Um, and he, we actually ended up getting him because the people that were meant to buy him um, pulled out and didn't want him anymore so he was the last one left so um yeah it was a it, um great for us obviously but yeah that's how he came to us um, i bet they are kicking themselves now <laughs> i bet i'd love to know who they were <laughs> so funny so you bought him as a companion at home or like a traveling companion for your horse so um, I bought him because um, it's really good when I, I also have lots of young horses that I bring on and I find it really useful having a sort of buddy for them. So although Teddy was is actually way younger than him, which we always find quite, than the young horses, we find quite amusing because he's like the stable, calm influence. Um, yeah, we bought Teddy just to come with the young horses to their first events and stuff. And he's sort of done that job and more really. Oh, bless him. So you had you got him when he was five months because normally aren't they weaned about six months or have I made this up? Yeah so he was a little bit early but he was so confident with eating hard food and generally eating that um, the breeder decided we got him from the Pingle stud which is quite a big stud and um, she sort of decided that he was ready to go so we got him just in time for Christmas. Oh. Um, yeah <laughs> and you could literally pick him up so what size was he when like dog wise what kind of dog size was he when you got him so we have a springer spaniel and he was about the same size as the springer spaniel oh, <laughs> he was my... literally tiny I can't yeah, it was really a, it was adorable. and that's how he sort of got so friendly really because he'd be so small that he'd you'd be sitting in the yard and he'd like come and sit on your lap and he was so light you'd allow it but now when he sits on my lap it's a bit more of a um, weight because obviously he's uh, got a little bit bigger not much but a little bit so. oh my goodness that is, that is too cute yeah it's literally adorable he's actually still just as adorable um we're very lucky he's um, so sweet so how did teddy go from companion to basically equine superstar what how, what did that journey look like um well it was christmas and we were all a bit sort of bored with the family and my younger cousins around and they just started an instagram page for their guinea pig and they sort of convinced us they were like oh he's really sweet come on you've got to start a page and my sister my sister's um quite cool and she was like oh no my friends are gonna think this is so sad and she was like if it doesn't go well in uh, we'll give it a month and if it's no good we'll um obviously delete it and um we got some massive shares by big pages because he was obviously so sweet and um it just escalated really like everyone was tagging their friends in his photos and sharing it um we got shared by lad bible and uni lad and that sort of big pages like that buzzfeed and then it just went crazy we were literally get refreshing and there were like hundreds and hundreds and of new followers every second so yeah so not even just equestrian pages are following you big, you know, big yeah. beyond the industry too yeah that's what's so surprising and um, we'll go to work and we'll be in London or something randomly talking to someone and they'll be like oh, like, oh my gosh have you seen this really they'll be like look they'll all have followed Teddy even though they're nothing they don't even know about horses so it's hilarious really and yeah some um, loads of non-horsey pages and cute animal pages started uh, sharing his stuff and it went from there really wow gosh so how long did that take to go from just starting the page to when you kind of started to think oh goodness, this is, this is quite a thing. This is 
not what we expected? <laughs> um, it was about probably about six months where it started really going crazy. Um, and yeah, we just, we saw amongst anything, I didn't really, when I started, know how to use Instagram. Luckily, my sister works in film PR, so she's quite savvy at that sort of thing, but I wasn't very good myself, so it was quite a steep learning curve, really. Um, but yeah, it was dead exciting. Um, and I, I still don't really think Teddy knows how many followers he actually has and how much people love him. It's crazy. And at the time of recording this, how many followers does he have on Instagram? Um, he has 126,300, I think. It's amazing. Isn't it? I mean, completely yeah. deserved, but it's amazing, isn't it? When you, it was something that you thought, oh, well, in, in a month we'll delete it if it's rubbish. Yeah, it's actually nuts because um, we found out since that people actually buy pets sort of with Instagram in mind, which seems crazy to us. They actually sort of go to the breeder, pick one for Instagram and that obviously wasn't what we did at all we sort of got here by accident which is quite amusing um I think the best way to be I mean yeah I think so I would hate to I would never buy an animal for Instagram it's just nice that it's sort of happened that way and people can share in how cute he is really he pay, we, we get messages every day saying oh he's really helped my mental health I look at his page every day and his stories that just make me smile and and all like people that have been going through hard hard times yesterday we got about 10 messages saying that which was really nice because it sort of puts a smile on people's faces I think that's um, incredible so at what point in your kind of Instagram journey did things start to change from just being online to getting other opportunities come through whether that was through dm or through email what kind of things started happening um it sort of happened I guess we didn't really, we weren't really obviously ever planning on getting jobs out of his Instagram page because it was all such a mistake, such a sort of crazy thing that was happening. We never expected it to happen. So I guess within the first year, we started doing lots of therapy work with him. So he would visit hospices and hospitals and um, schools and stuff like that and obviously that was all voluntary because we wanted to sort of give back but we started getting approached by his email address people would sort of send us emails and and we start at first we were like no we sort of don't have the time for it we both have full-time jobs but then we sort of thought well actually if it could help pay for the insurance of his um that he we have to pay for him to go into the hospices and do the voluntary work then maybe we should start accepting it so we've got we literally got we've i think he's done stuff with um Povis, Amazon, um, gosh, I can't think of them all now, but um, he's done photo shoots with Dior now. Um, and yeah, all sorts of crazy things. The, the um, team from town and country came with a sort of van of 20 people <laughs> with caterers and everything to our house. And we were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> literally that sort of when it hit, hit us that um, it's not even just the horsey people that, sort of interested in him it's people like that as well we actually met them at um chelsea flower show which he now goes to every year he's on the sort of press um people to sort of famous people to look out for list which is nuts um but yeah but i love that it's extended beyond beyond equestrian i think that's really interesting i mean i'm not again i'm not surprised because he's crazy cute but can you talk yeah. to us about the things like you know amazon and you know you said Hovis didn't you so how did how did that work and how does that sort of fit with I mean it must be so odd going from you basically bought a pony as a companion and now <laughs> you've got approaches by people like Amazon and Hovis about working with them yeah it's pretty nuts um yeah so he's he's done some like film screening um film screenings with uh, Paramount <laughs> where he sort of attends because they they invite lots of influencers um human influencers and uh, for the first time, Teddy. So he did one of them and um, Hovis was sort of um, sponsoring it, I guess. They, were provide they provided this sort of like um, sandwich van, but a very posh looking sandwich van with uh, Hovis toasted sandwiches. And they sort of wanted him to, we took some really nice pictures of um, Teddy next to the van. And, and so opportunities just sort of stem from um, 
the first invitation via email and then it, it always seems to just build into other things because everyone sees him and thinks um i mean at the premiere at the film premiere he went inside and he lay down on the bean bags in front of the film screen and <laughs> fell asleep for an hour and all the um all the celebrities that were there were like <laughs> couldn't believe it they he was on all of their instagram stories like peter, peter crouch and abby clancy and um all of the um lots of the people from the only way is Essex and stuff like that and it's crazy because I think his behavior at events like this he's such a like little angel that it sort of attracts more attention so it started with one thing and then it seems to have just built really <laughs> which is what, nice. how did Amazon work how did you get involved with Amazon so Amazon was actually, um, they have an Amazon pets competition to find um, the sort of Amazon pet of the year. And um, they wanted Teddy to promote it um, on his page. So he sort of, yeah, gave out all the details for the competition and stuff like that. So it stems with stuff like that. And then it sort of grows, which is really nice. And he, they were, um, with Penguin Books, they did a, like book about horses a, ch a child's book which they wanted it had a sort of farewell looking pony in it that they wanted Teddy to promote so that was fun too. um yeah so I love that he's actually in I know he obviously is an influencer because he's got such a big following and obviously people do um see his speed and and are influenced by it but the fact that he's going on to press events as an influencer with human influencers is amazing I absolutely <laughs> love that yeah we still find it absolutely hilarious um yeah and the the other well i i still don't even really consider him as an influencer because it's a bit of a weird thing isn't it but um yeah the the human influencers absolutely love it and it sort of hits you that oh maybe he is like having this impact it's been quite quite shocking really i love the fact that he's probably outside now messing about with his horse friends um having a bite to eat, chilling in his stable, whatever he's up to, and just completely unaffected by any of it. Yeah, I'd love to know sort of how much he knows. I know he sort of does think he's quite attractive and trots around the field with his head like held high and swishing his mane. But yeah, he just has a really normal life. I think people think sometimes we sort of share little snippets of his life. And I think people often think, oh, he's, he's so busy. He's doing stuff all the time. But actually, most of the time, he's just in the field with my other horses, eating grass, just being a normal pony. Um, he does do weird things. Like yesterday, we took him for a swim in the River Thames because he likes swimming. Um, so <laughs> I guess he doesn't have a totally normal life, but it's only thing he loves it. So we just take him when it gets hot, which is nice. But I love the fact that your advanced event horse, you know, he goes to all these posh parties and, you know, normally the you know, your adva the advanced event horses on yards are like gods <laughs> um, whereas there's this sort of little shetland that kind of rocks up and he's like yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah like, hilarious. You know, like, when teddy walks and everyone melts <laughs> and he just looks like this little pony because he's so small i don't think people um yeah but it's really nice because billy absolutely adores him he literally i think he thinks he's his like dad or something <laughs> because when the other horses try to go near him or if they pull a face at teddy uh finley will literally he's he's like the sweetest horse but he'll literally like try and bite them because <laughs> he's so protective over him it's really sweet and he like wraps his neck around him and brings him closer to him <laughs> so really, yeah it's really sweet <laughs> So what have been some of the best opportunities that have come out of Teddy? I mean, obviously you talked about some of the like, big high profile ones, but I think sometimes the things that mean the most to us or the, the most incredible things aren't always the really big things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so he does a lot of, lot of charity work, as I said. Um, and we, we obviously, because of the sensitivity of some of the things that we do, don't really share any of that on um, his social media because we often sort of take him into children's hospices and obviously my phone stays in the car. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, that's probably the most rewarding for us because they sort of don't know that he has a huge following and they, I'm, I'm sure they don't really care. They just absolutely, he walks into the children's hospice and he, 
like he absolutely loves the children they wait at the window for him in their wheelchairs then one little girl um was desperate to ride a horse and I've been saying for years no he's too young sorry when he's four and he turned four and he started being ridden and it was the day of the Grand National and um and she she's attached to a ventilator but she actually was able to ride Teddy around the hospice and we put the um the sort of Grand National cheering on and she was sort of waving to her to all of her friends and it was just it's just like moments like that just make you think this is why um this pony's here it's not because of all the sort of things that make him um that he does at a high profile it's often the things that we don't even share that are the sort of most special so yeah that was definitely a moment that was really special we all sort of even the staff at the hospice were like fighting back the tears when we said bye because it was so like you could see how much it meant to her and um yeah, she put on um, this sort of red, um, her red school jacket because she wanted to look like a jockey. It was so sweet. Um, so yeah, stuff like that is really special. Um, and yeah, as I said, because we don't really share, so it's um, sort of stuff that we keep to ourselves. So yeah, absolutely, obviously with, with children anyway, you've got to be very careful what you share, yeah. but especially with the hospice angle. Yeah, but it's nice to be able to talk about it because obviously... Um, That's amazing. I didn't realise he did so much of that kind of work. Um, yeah, he loves it actually. <laughs> he never wants to leave, it's really funny. He just gets in there and as soon as he gets in there, he falls asleep. But then it's such a lovely, I say lovely, it's a sad environment, but the staff make it so lovely. They do so many amazing things. Um, like they're having a beach party which Teddy's going to and they have so many fun things that um yeah it it's always really re rewarding taking them there yeah. that's incredible yeah <laughs> feeling quite emotional now that is amazing um and obviously the difference it makes to those children will just be off the chart yeah definitely um I mean even if they can't speak you can you there's the um, people that work there say, oh my gosh, that, that little boy hasn't been able to move his arm like that for weeks and until be stroking Teddy and all people that are withdrawn or sort of unable to communicate, they can communicate with horses because they're so um, such gentle animals and they sort of just stand there and, well, Teddy just stands there and <laughs> um, enjoys being loved. So yeah, it's really nice. And um We've been going there for a few years now, so um, Teddy knows all the staff and everyone really well, so they always bring a massive carrot out of him at the end. <laughs> so you also work with the Wil um, Hannah's Wilbury Wonder Pony charity as well, don't you? Yeah, so I was um, good friends with Hannah, and um, Hannah actually has um, a Chetland pony from Teddy's stud. Oh, is so, it called, um, because of the Doris. Doris doesn't give me an yes. at all. Called Doris. I was thinking she Mabel. She does also have a horse called Mavis, so that's probably what you're thinking of. Um, but yeah, so um, so Teddy uh, absolutely adores Doris. It's so sweet. They still meet up quite regularly, and um, obviously Doris does stuff for the charity. And then um, Teddy and Doris went to Olympia together. They um, um, because uh, Wilbury was the charity of the year, and they sort of got to go on the beat with the Metropolitan Police and do all sorts of exciting things in the lead up to sort of talk about the charity and promote it. So um, yeah, it's uh, really nice to do stuff with Wilbury and um, we'll always jump at the opportunity with Teddy if we're asked to do anything in particular. So that's really nice. Yeah, it's um, such an incredible charity. And I mean, what, yeah. what Hannah achieved in her far too short life was just insane. Um, and the fact it's still going on now and doing such amazing good work is is incredible. I work with Hi Ho Silver, so we have we I don't design jewelry. They have a, a Wilbury collection, and um, yeah, we talk about Hannah quite regularly. I've got, actually, I've got the Wilbury charm for my necklace. Um, it's lovely. Yeah, no, we um, I'm I helped to set up the research side of the charity because my job is um bone research in bone disease. So we've sort of I've been quite involved with the charity um, ever since and um, we're now sort of funding all sorts of amazing research projects which will hopefully make a massive difference but that was really important to Hannah um, but yeah it's so lovely she's um, 
still sort of so talked about and she was always worried she'd be forgotten but there's absolutely no chance of that because everyone is still so behind it um and yeah she was she was really inspirational i think she just captured the whole not even the whole um equestrian community everyone was sort of captivated by her bravery so yeah it's really nice to still do stuff with teddy um with the charity and yeah we still see i still see rachel her mum, and her dad and um doris a lot so it's really nice <laughs> and you all see so many wilbury wonder pony ponies stuffed toys on the back of people's um yeah. going around big events which i just love because every time you see it you instantly think of hannah and all the amazing yeah, things so do. nice yeah i think she'd be um i've actually just been to namulan with um with um sap sort of doing um some videos about wilbury and they they um work a lot with ingrid klimka so we have been talking to her about wilbury um and it's amazing how sort of how captivated she is by the whole story and how supportive she is and everyone out there was sort of wearing their Wilburys and their berry ponies on their back and yeah it d does definitely um sort of make you think wow this is um Hannah would be so so amazed to see all these people with these ponies on their back yeah it would mean a lot okay. and, so obviously you you were involved with Olympia um this year because well last year Yes, because this yeah. year, 2019, um, that was the Wilby charity. And Teddy was at Olympia as well, wasn't he? Um, yeah, so it was, so last year Teddy went to Olympia by his, himself because it was, um, the Brook was the charity last year. And then the year before it was Wilbury um, as a charity. So um, I think, yeah, so I think Teddy's going to be going this year again, I think. Um, he, they have um different charities every year so um and they sort of try to keep it as um sort of just that charity but we'll outside i've got all sorts of ideas to do some fundraising for wilbury and um, we're thinking we're, we we want really want to um make some teddy merchandise so i'm thinking about um what the possibilities are for that because i'm always keen for, to raise money for wilbury and raise awareness so um yeah that'd be good that's really but, good. um yeah and actually through olympia we've um because they organize royal windsor as well teddy actually got to meet allegro this year at royal windsor which was really cool did you see I, the photos yes i had a picture in my head of teddy meeting allegro and then you know yeah. when you start to kind of overthink it i thought no no i've just made that up that will be too perfect <laughs> yeah it was a, it was really surreal actually because they um we knew Vallegro was there, but we were, I obviously worked full time, so I, I couldn't go in the week, which was when the dressage was on. And um, I got got a call the night before, and they were like, "Can you be there by seven tomorrow morning? You can go straight to work afterwards." And I was like, "Ooh, uh, what for?" And they said um, that they wanted um, Vallegro and Teddy to be on Good Morning Britain and do a photo shoot. And I was like, "Oh yeah!" And like I was like, "Yes." Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah we did that and um, the photos are absolutely perfect um, Rose from Daydream um, did the photos and they were so good but the, sometimes a photo makes it look like they got on really well but they didn't but actually they were absolutely besotted with each other it was really sweet they were literally like grazing nose to nose for about an hour so yeah it was it was one of those mornings that I don't think I will ever forget it was quite amazing that's amazing that's um, so lovely. yeah yeah no it's really nice and Vallegro is like yeah he's a complete gentleman and um so well mannered and lovely and Teddy just absolutely loved him um so yeah it was really cool <laughs> so has has having teddy allowed you to do obviously it's allowed you to do some things that you never thought you would i mean that's quite a surreal moment being on good morning britain with Belegro. um but has it allowed you to meet people that you have sort of wanted to meet for a long time or has having him allowed you to do things that you never dreamed possible uh yeah definitely um we have had so many amazing opportunity sometimes my sister and I just look at each other and we're like this is absolutely nuts like what are we doing here and the funny thing is it's not us that's been invited we're just Teddy's groupies 
so he's done um he's done all these well he's done a few um big parties like he uh i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say who it was but he did a big footballers party the other day um oh, for their child. A private party yeah about child's first first birthday and um, he did binky felstead from made in chelsea's um india's first birthday party which was quite amazing because um yeah <laughs> it was just like oh, the, there were only a few guests and then there was teddy um and yeah you sort of just sometimes think oh my gosh like what am i doing here <laughs> i'm just uh I just researched bone disease and I, I um, was just an event before this. It's really weird. But yeah. So in terms of when Teddy gets invited to things like parties or because he does stand appearances as well, doesn't he, at shows? Yeah, that's does. obviously something that is that you, you charge for, or quite rightly, I'm not saying, but if, if someone's listening to this and go and thinking, actually, that would be incredible, that is a chargeable thing and they just need to reach out to you. Yeah, definitely. Um, he has an email, teddytheshetland at gmail.com, which I try to push everything towards because if we get a DM, it's sometimes really hard because in the replies to his stories are sometimes, well, depends on how good the story is, but sometimes there's absolutely loads and I feel really bad because I've missed a message that would have been really good. But yeah, um, and also we're obviously, we're not in it at all to make money. We're just wanting to sort of, we're just enjoying the uh, opportunities we're getting and um so yeah definitely if anyone is interested drop us an email that's probably the best way but you say from a business point of view because he does have costs like your insurances yeah. and transport i mean I've, i'm going to have to ask you how he gets about um <laughs> because i'm hoping that's going to be amazing um but you know he does have costs and you have costs so um, I yeah. think there's a real culture of people going, oh, well, people should do things for free. And actually, when I spoke to Gracie Tight, um, who's Pony Nuts on Instagram, yeah. a few weeks ago, she was saying that she'd had quite a lot of people going, well, you should be doing things for free. And she was going, well, you know, that actually takes me quite a lot of time to make this content, organise the content, the back and the forward and all of this. And actually, yeah. charging was really for the size of influencer she is, um, so little. Mm -hmm. and people were giving her stick for it and I always just think it's so wrong because when you look at influences in other industries yeah they charge a phenomenal amount but there's some thing in equestrian and equine that we're not quite there yet but I think we're getting there yeah definitely and I think when we work with companies that aren't horsey they sort of under they sort of assume that we they are going to pay us but yeah. I think in the equine industry it always seems to be a some people are amazing, don't get me wrong, but it seems to be a bit of a, an assumption that um, you sort of don't have any costs. But then there's stuff like last year, Teddy was so ill, he nearly died. He, that cost £3,000 in the vets. Yes. And um, yeah, he is really poorly. Um, and because he um, is insured to be a therapy pony at the time, um, my insurance would either co cover one or the other. So I did, He people sort of, must be thinking why wasn't he insured but he was it's just I'd gone for the had to go for the therapy pony insurance rather than the vets included um so yeah that was a big expense so I think people don't realize sometimes that it is actually like every little thing costs a lot and every time we do something my sister and I have to take a day off work um and yeah yes so absolutely there is there is quite a lot of costs to, to I mean horse ownership full stop even when you look at like worming and farriery and uh, stuff it's a lot let alone transporting around the countryside if he, you know the insurances you have to pay etc etc yeah and I sort of assume that a little horse went when they went into the vets the price would be like a third of the cost because they're little but it's not it's exactly the same um so Teddy when he was in um, Lipwick was in this massive stable and he was just like this little tiny white dot and yeah it cost an absolute fortune which obviously we'd happily pay but there, there are a lot of costs involved in driving, work, vets, so many different things. So what, what was Teddy in Lipwick for? I, I've got it in my mind but what was he in for? So he, they don't actually know what caused it but he basically collapsed one night when I brought him in from the field and um, I put his dinner down he took one look at it and just like lay down so we had to rush him into lip hook and it was really scary 
and um, they thought that he might have something contagious so they uh, oh, isolated him and put him in this like stable away from everyone else he had to wear a sort of a bowler suit to go anywhere near him um he didn't have anything contagious but i guess they're just precautious because they didn't know why he collapsed um and it turns out that i had wormed him the day before um with what i'd read online was all right for shetlands and um he'd had some kind of reaction to it that's what they think it was um because his protein levels were down his white blood cell levels are down he was just like um he he basically had really bad colic um i think and um yeah it was really it was really scary they thought he he was he was literally um the whole stable was obviously filled with white shavings and he's literally just on it flat out on his side for like a week not moving at all so yeah we thought he was going to die so obviously we didn't share that with his followers because they would have been absolutely traumatized but um i've still got videos of it and looking back it he was so ill so he must be a little fighter in there because um so obviously i've been a nervous wreck ever since about worming him um so he has to have like steroids now to line his stomach before he's wormed because otherwise i'm the vets are worried that it will happen again oh wow um, so yeah um, Thank you. That's fun. Scary, yeah. So it's always like, actually, he's due to be worn soon. So if you don't hear from me, um, no, I'm joking. Hopefully, he'll be fine. He has been wormed since, and it was fine with the steroids. So we're hoping that we've got it under control. But it was very scary for a little bit. And I suppose at least now you know what it is, even though it's still terrifying. You can make sure yeah. you worm him at a time, like no, not on a Friday night. Um, yeah. Exactly. And that you're kind of aware and you're monitoring and you know. Monday. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Crikey. Yeah. That really yeah. Was that was quite dramatic. God, I, I can't imagine if he did die, that would be an absolute oh. awful thing. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's got a very, very long life ahead. He's only a young I hope ago. so. He's only four, so yeah. He's um And I always think with these things as well, like thank goodness it was you that had him and you brought him in at that time and you were uh, there to see that sequence of events, although obviously harrowing and really scary, you could then act on it quickly. I know, because I guess if he, if he like lived out and someone checked him once a day, they would have missed that because it's because he's so pampered. He uh, comes in every night with my eventers and he sort of gets his stable and his very small dinner um, that we actually noticed it. So um, yeah, it was quite lucky. So how does he move around the countryside? Does he go in a normal horse box? I'd like to say he goes in a limo or something. Um, but yes, he goes, in, he goes in a normal horse box, but he just doesn't get tied up because he decides halfway through it, if you tie him up, that he'd quite like to lie down. And then he's like, <laughs> you get the, you sort, can sort of imagine the kind of scene you come out and his head is like, um, <laughs> like, stretching because he's decided he wants to lie down so we've decided to just leave him loose from now on and um actually ironically i've been looking at um everyone thinks i'm so sad but i've been looking at those um cars that are sort of built for secondhand ones with a disabled ramp because i was thinking it'd be so much easier to just whiz him around the country in like a little car that i can actually um, yeah so we're thinking about a teddy mobile so um that's the sort of thought that would be yeah. insane you'd have yeah, someone that said they could like customize it and pimp it out as well which would be so funny or oh, you've got to have like custom paint job crazy <laughs> well, can you imagine me going to like the supermarket getting food or something and in the teddy mobile that'd be just like yes you looks you have to do that now <laughs> you never used to watch the program pimp my ride yeah that's what we're thinking yes <laughs> They always, oh, no. send, they, always have, so funny. they always used to have like a really broken car that was worth you know a few hundred dollars and they put like a 10 ah. sound system in and you'd be like <laughs> <laughs> maybe don't go down that route but that would be insane yeah that would be so funny wouldn't it <gasps> you could have like air con in the back and <laughs> uh, I, you you've got to, you've got to do that now like, cool paintwork yeah, it, it, you could go quite overboard, couldn't you, with it? <laughs> I think it would be a crime not to. I 
think. Yeah. I think, I think so. That's so um, yeah, watch watch this space. We hope to uh, develop a temper bill. <laughs> that's amazing. So okay. that leads us quite nicely onto what does the future hold for you as an event rider and Teddy as a global equine superstar? And I think he's earned that badge. Um, yeah, so the nice thing is that we sort of get surprised by um, emails and exciting things to do. So we don't always actually know what's um, coming. So um, we have that to look forward to, but we also have a few cool things planned like um, monsoon and accessorize are launching a new pony range for that autumn children's wear range and they want teddy to be involved and also at royal windsor we met um with someone that works for castle radio who and they're really keen to have teddy sort of on the show and potentially doing some um of their jingle bell ball stuff which is really cool um and yeah with my eventing i um I have, we're actually doing the Hickstead Eventers Challenge, which Teddy is coming along to um, support, <laughs> um, which should be really cool. And we're planning on going abroad. It's really nice having a horse that's at my horse's level because you can start to plan some really exciting things and adventures that you sort of always wanted to do, but never had the horsepower to do. So it's nice because Teddy can come along to all of that and he absolutely loves like traveling and feeling part of the team he actually loads himself if you don't if you don't take him so he definitely makes sure that he's on that lorry so um yeah he'll definitely be coming which would be great fun and how does it run with your eventing and teddy and his appointments appointments appearances because obviously in the season in the event season it's, it's manic isn't it but yeah teddy's also got a manic schedule and you work full time so how does that work it's um yeah it's kind of hard juggling everything it means we go to bed very late because we sort of have to um manage his instagram after riding it we ride until 10 or 10 30 every night and then do like an hour and a half of page admin um but yeah it, it works fine um we obviously it does limit us because we have to sort of do stuff at weekends um rather than being available midweek so we have had to say no to a few exciting things um but yeah it's it works all right because in the winter we sort of make sure teddy's really busy so he he does lots of his charity stuff and his um main things in the winter when obviously the event season is quieter and then at the moment teddy isn't doing so much he's doing more sort of like promotion stuff which means we can do that from home rather than having to go places but he does actually get involved with the eventing too which is great like we've been invited to Hartbury to do the three-day event and Teddy's sort of their little mascot this year which should be fun um so yeah it works quite well they sort of go hand in hand because Teddy likes company eventing well at least I think he does he enjoys the grass when he gets out of the lorry anyway <laughs> Uh, did you did you see oh god was it last year or the year before burley had a a thing where they had some dogs d jumping the cross-country course and they had one with free runners yeah i saw that that was so good i feel like that is an opportunity for teddy to do his own burley yeah that'd be so cool he actually went to badminton this year which was really good fun because he had sort of pitches lying under all the fences i was gonna say he could nip <laughs> under the fences that would be yeah. the beauty of it or swimming it so the lake. Big. They were so big, he could literally walk under them with a saddle on his back. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It was Has he also been involved with Kizzy and Etty? Yeah, so um, they are amazing little riders and um, Teddy hadn't really been ridden much before because obviously it's, it's really hard to get someone that's confident enough to sort of want to do, want to trot and go faster than just a walk so he'd been ridden by babies he'd been ridden in the basket saddle by my dog in trot but he hadn't really done of course as you do <laughs> my dog actually loves it it's quite funny but yeah he hadn't actually done loads of jumping and riding and stuff and also he's obviously quite young so we went to meet them and we just had we had the best time every time we see them because they're an amazing family and the kids are so brave and they just jumped on teddy jumped around a cross-country course of jumps um which teddy's done before in hand but never with a rider on his back and he really enjoys it now when you put the bridle on he gets like all excited thinking that he's gonna see kissy and Eddie. <laughs> um so yeah he loves it too but, yeah, 
they had a little ride on him at badminton as well which was good i think it they were sort of watching the riders up from his back which is really sweet (laughs) so can you tell us all the places where we can find out more about you and more about teddy yeah so here obviously teddy's main instagram is just at teddy the shetland um he his email address very original is teddy the shetland at gmail.com he doesn't actually have his own website but he has facebook which again is the same teddy the shetland and then i have uh, facebook which is alice goring eventing that's my eventing page and photos of teddy do go on there quite frequently as well <laughs> and i have a website which is alice goring eventing.com so yeah lots of different things <laughs> lots of different places well it's been amazing talking to you and i cannot wait to see what teddy gets up to and what you get up to in the future too yeah thank you so much it's been really good